Anyways, you gotta understand, dude. Game theory and politics. That's what China does, bro. Okay? They've been messing with the U.S. Uh, politics for a long time. But I think it hasn't been noticeable until recently. <clears throat> At least more noticeable. So, it's... They say the supreme art of war is subduing your enemy without fighting. And that's what China's doing, bro. They're geniuses. Check this out. China has controlled a large part of the Asia for a long time, right? And they've been planning this for a long time. They have this thing called a thousand grains of sand or something like that. It's like their belief. Um, it's one of their old emperors or something believed in this stuff. But anyways, check this out. They've always believed that uh, like if you send a thousand people to the beach, they get like a grain of sand. So it's a thousand grain of sands. I don't know. Like you build a beach. That's their belief or something like that. I don't know. Anyways, that's a very important number for them. Thousand, right? One thousand. Or just thousand, you know, I guess. Um, so anyways, we start off with 2001. Susan Rosenberg, she is, uh, I guess, classified as like a terrorist or something. For like fighting for like some stuff. Um, she's crazy. Well, I mean, she was fighting for what she believed in. But I mean, she's still crazy. Anyways, um, she went to prison. She was supposed to be there for 58 years. She didn't do 50 years, she did 16 years. And why? Because Bill Clinton, on his last day of office, who that's what I'm saying, it might have been decades, uh, Bill Clinton uh, commuted her sentence. So something about uh, time served, I believe. And so she was released because of him. It's so weird that he waited for like his last day of office to do it. But anyways, he did it. Boom, she's gone. She's out. She's free. Anyways, um, we move forward. 2008. What happens to 2008? There's a thing that China establishes. It's called Thousand Currents. Or no, sorry. Thousand Talents. Yeah, Thousand Talents. Thousand Talents. Like I said, the number thousand. So anyways, Thousand Talents. Um, they're like a Chinese. Um, like they create get-togethers and they fund the universities of the U.S. with uh, like donations and stuff like that. And they help Chinese students. They also invest and they give money to Chinese students to travel to the U.S. and learn, study abroad. And if you notice, that's the reason why there's a ton of Chinese uh, people that go to U.S. universities compared to every other country. I mean, they do go to other countries, but the U.S. is like crazy. They, a ton of them come. And you've always been wondering why. Hmm. Well, that's the reason why, because of Thousand Talents. Um, so anyways, they are even trying to move in. Recently, they've been even moving into trying to go to like pre-K and stuff like that. And if you've even wondered, that's the reason why they have VIP Kid. Think about it, bro. They're trying to learn, trying to spy. You might think, Rudy, you're just being crazy, but I'm not. It's, it's all coming together, bro. So anyways, think about this. 2008, what also happened? It was a very uh, huge time. Uh, let's see. Obama was became president. And you might think, oh, Rudy, you're just, you're just stretching now. Well, guess what? Check what happened in 2008. Obama enters. And one of his big deal is that he's going to rebuild the military in Asia. Um, I mean, he didn't make a big deal about it, but that's what he did. So he rebuilt the, the military in Asia, especially around China. And so you're thinking, hmm, maybe he's trying to attack China. But no, he wasn't. What he was actually doing is he was trying to make it seem or at least give an alibi. More, is that the word alibi? Give a reason. Give a reason for China to then build their military like extremely. They've been building it like really quickly. So anyways, why would they build a military? Well, one, because they have a huge ass male population because they're stupid. And they did this whole one child law back in the day. So they did this one child law. Um, and so because they valued men more because men tend to stay with the, the parents um, when they get older uh, versus women where they go with the husband and they help their family. They, a lot of Chinese families decided we'll just have a man or a boy, and when they would have a boy, they would have a girl. They would just kind of throw her into the trash can, or you know, get rid of them. Um, and then when they had a boy, they would just say they had one boy, or they would hide the daughter, stuff like that. But anyways, you they created a huge male population, and how do you get rid of that? Uh, well, you kind of just put in the military, you create jobs, and I mean, you also create your defenses, which is what they wanted to do because they're planning to use it to create intimidation to have that really strong military for future things around Asia. So anyways, what um, what happened after 2008? Uh, 2013, that's when they get elected uh, President Xi, China. President Xi, China. 
And what is his big spiel when he gets elected? He's like, oh, I'm going to do the one road, bro. One road, one belt, bro. And you're thinking, what is that? So that's like he's trying to rebuild a trade and stuff and like rebuild the Silk Road. So the Silk Road back in the day was this uh, road um, <laughs> that pretty much they use to trade between Europe and Asia and, and stuff like that. So anyways, that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to make China uh, like really awesome in trade, which makes sense. But how he's doing it is very interesting. So a lot of countries that are poor and they can't pay stuff back, they're actually um, they're getting loans from China. And China's willing to, you know, here's loan, man. Here's loans. Here's a bunch of loans. And so they know they're not going to be able to pay back. So because these countries can't pay back, they're like in very huge deficits. So then China's like, you know what? You don't have to pay us back. You know how you can pay us back? You can just give us one of your ports or you can just uh, give us a part of your, you know, this part of your country and then we call it even stevens and they're like oh for sure man especially a lot of countries in africa they're doing that so what about countries that don't want to do that and they don't want to pay well that's the reason why there's a lot of random explosions beirut um a lot of uh pandemics going on to drive down the markets drive down the economies so anyway, you're, you, you're like, Rudy, you're, you're, getting, you're getting ahead of yourself. How, how, that's, that's a huge jump. Well, guess what? Guess what happened in 2016 that was a huge upset that didn't, you didn't think was going to happen in the U.S.? Trump won. It's like, what? Hillary was supposed to win that for sure. She had like more than two times the money. And she still lost because she's a freaking loser. So anyways, Trump wins, right? Get this. He wins. And his first big spiel is he's like, he's going to do foreign trade. And he's going to create a border, right? Okay. So the thing that's more important is the foreign trade. He's planning to do these one deals, one-sided deals, um, versus like these huge things like NATO and all these trade deals between a lot of multiple countries um, where, <clears throat> where the countries were like, well, sorry, U.S., it's because the other country has this deal with you, so I have to have the same deal with you. But when Trump did that, he did this deal where it, it benefited the U.S., he would do it, and if it didn't, well, then screw you. So... China didn't like that. So guess what happens in 2019? He starts creating tariffs year before, uh, on China. And then China's like pissed off. They're like, well, we're going to do more tariffs on you, man. And then it's like this whole back and forth. But because it wasn't really hurting our economy that much, it has something happened in 2020, January. China signed the U.S. trade deal, which was a great deal for us. And then suddenly, suddenly something happened. 2020. January, you might say, oh, what was happening in December? There was a pandemic already. <laughs> oh, in Wuhan, the tunnel. No, okay. What happened was China could have blocked this virus, but they were like, nah, you know what? We're going to make this super weak-ass virus, and we're going to let that just, you know, go. Maybe they didn't create it, but for sure they could have stopped it, and they didn't, right? So anyways, they kind of let it go. They let it go into the, the, the world, and it finally reached the U.S. Because, I mean, even the WHO... If you're wondering who the who is, it's a really great band, but I'm also talking about who as in the World uh, Health Organization or something like that, they're called. And even they were like, oh, this isn't a big deal. There's not a lot of people getting affected. And there was a lot of people getting affected. Some people were dying. So when it got to the U.S., we didn't expect it. We didn't think it was a huge deal. It became a huge deal, right? A lot of countries thought it was a huge deal, but in the U.S., it's a huge deal. So now we're getting reports that there's a lot of numbers being lied to. People were like, oh, um, people are like doubling numbers that are actually getting infected, even though it's not real, or people are double counting. And why? Because they don't want the economy to go up. And so what is happening now? So the economy should have gone down. It should have hurt Trump a lot for this election. Why is this happening in an election year, right? Weird. Because Trump wasn't supposed to win in 2016, but he did. And he's also creating all these tariffs. He can't be bought. Maybe he can't be bought, but he's not. they're not putting enough money on there. And that's why he can't be bought. So anyways, um, Antifa and Black Lives Matter. How is this involved? Okay, Antifa was, a, was like from the start when Trump got in, it was like, who's funding Antifa? We don't know. But Black Lives Matter is just different. They're like a cool, they're a cool um, organization. You can... You can fund them and it's fine, right? You can even get tax breaks. Well, guess what? 
they just they can't fund they, you can't fund them so they got somebody else who is an organization they're called thousand currents um thousand currents weird right name thousand currents 2016 they changed their name um that's when trump got elected so weird right so anyways they got changed into their name thousand currents thousand sand thousand grand stands thousand talents they're all connected bro um thousand currents is taking the money from uh, or handling money for black lives matter so now black lives matters has a ton of money so that they can start called protest do protests all around and it's tax break and it looks all cool and it looks all super chill so china um because all this is going down all these good stuff's going down they're trying to they're trying to take over the world bro okay that's what they're trying to do they, they, the U.S. controls the world economy. Well, not the world economy, but we have the best economy. And we also have oil. Oil is very strong. Or when the U.S. dollar is correlated with the oil, barrel of oil. Uh, we did that. We settled this a long time ago. That's the reason why we always send people to aid, to the Middle East. So anyways, um, recently we actually had a, a trade deal. Or no, sorry, a peace deal with... Uh, one of the middle middle eastern countries and it's a huge deal for trump and guess what that's probably going to increase stock prices a little bit but it's also going to make everything seem super chill and guess what china doesn't like that so obviously you should expect another huge deal is going to happen like something crazy is going to happen soon because it's messing up china's plan and that's the reason why i don't know if you noticed but uh somebody pelosi her name nancy pelosi she actually just said oh snap we need to do this recess thing and we need to stop this summer recess and we need to get back and we need to get uh, uh, the, the, the U.S. population with this uh, relief plan and all this stuff. But they didn't want to do the relief plan before, right? And then Trump came in, used game theory, bam, said, you know, I'm going to do an executive order. He looks like the good guy. And then now Nancy Pelosi's like, damn, I messed up because I'm thinking the Democrats or something's involved, dude, where China's paying them off or something's going on, bro, because they really don't want this country going good. And I'm thinking it's because China's, like, putting some money in some of these guys' pockets. Like, Nancy Pelosi, I think. But, anyways, why are you wondering why I said Susan Rosenberg in Clinton? Um, well, in 2001, like I said, his last day of office, he let her, um, let her go or commuted her or whatever. But, recently, she just became one of the fundraisers and, uh, like, uh, big people for Black Lives Matter. So that's what I'm saying, bro. All this connected. Clinton, China, 2020, all this shit's going down. All this shit going down is for a reason. Like, you might be thinking, oh, uh, it's not, it's, you're just you're, you're connecting a lot of dots, really. You're crazy. Well, think about this. The NBA, when they started doing the custom jerseys, you couldn't put free China or free Hong Kong, right? Because of China. China doesn't like that. Okay? There's a lot of things going down that people don't like, like that China doesn't like that people want to do in the US. Like, why is TikTok a huge thing and they're spying, right? Why is TikTok a Chinese country? Uh, why is, why are they creating these things so that uh, they can track us and stuff, huh? Why, why are they these uh, these companies, these Chinese companies, trying to spy all the time, hmm? Hmm, hmm? Because China knows what they're doing, bro. They're out here trying to make money and it makes sense. I'm not even mad. I'm just telling you what's up because I'm actually like very impressed with China. China's playing the long game, bro. They're playing the long game and they're playing a little bit risky this year, 2020. But yeah, that's what I have to say. China is smart. They're using game theory and politics and this is all connected, bro. It's all connected.